In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do the continuous join as you go method. So this is for any granny squares. So I've done four rounds on my granny squares just here. And then the continuous join as you go is the fifth round, but it's worked in a way that we're going to just join all of these granny squares all at once. It's a really nice way of doing your grannies for projects like this so that you don't have to do five rounds and then sew or crochet them all together. It's all done at once and it's a really nice, super sturdy join as well. So this is a toddler size poncho that I've just done here. Um, and these are some of the squares that I've got left over. So I'll show you how we're going to join these together. So a few things to note before we get started. You can do this method with any size granny square. So if you've only got two rounds, if you've got six rounds, this will just apply to the final round that you want of your granny square, where we're going to join it all together. I will also just point out that some of these granny squares that I'm using have super short ends. That's because I had used these granny squares in a project and I'd sewn in the ends and then I needed to undo it. And <laughs> this is the damage control from that. So I'm just, these are kind of like my sample squares. So ordinarily my ends would be much longer. We'll just ignore that <laughs> for the sake of this video. Okay, so when we're working this, we have, we want to have our squares laid out in the order that we want them, just so that we have that in our mind. We're going to start in this top corner here, and then we're going to work our way around this top section, so this top row, and then we're going to work around the next row down. Now, of course, if you had more squares, we would just continue across that top row. And then if we had more rows, we would continue to go down. I have this little diagram here. So as I say, we're going to start at the top. This is an example of six squares across in total. So we're going to go across, round, across, like I mentioned. And then we're going to go all the way back um, over and then do the same thing. You'll notice here when we get to the final row, we're then going to go right back up and meet ourselves at the beginning. So in this example here, we'll start here, go across, down, up, across, down, up, across, down, all the way across and then repeat the same thing all the way across and then finish this row just here. So I'll keep coming back to this view so that you can be mindful of how it's looking, but let's go ahead and take our very first square, which is this one right here, and then we're going to join in the top corner. So I'm going to be using this yarn for um, my border color, just like I have on the toddler poncho, and hopefully this will make it really easy for you to see where we're going with this. I also want to point out that this will also work no matter how you do your granny squares. I know some people put a chain one in between, which I do. Some people don't like that. Some people do a chain three in the corner, a chain two, a chain four. It doesn't matter. I do a chain three, so I'll talk you through that, but you can adapt it to however you do your granny squares. You don't have to do them exactly the same as me. Okay, so let's grab this very first granny square, which we're going to be working on, and you want to connect in the top corner just here, the yarn that you're using. So I'm going to go ahead and join with the slip stitch into that corner space. I'm going to chain three for my first treble crochet. Remember, I'm working in UK terms, so in the US this is known as a double crochet. I'm going to work my first three trebles into this corner space. Please be mindful that I'm showing you the continuous join as you go method here rather than actually teaching you the stitches. So if you need some videos for that, I have a tutorial for it. So go ahead and check the description. I'm going to chain one and then I'm just going to continue my way across this 
uh, first edge, so the top edge, by working the stitches that I would normally uh, um, do in my fifth round. So three trebles, chain one, three trebles, and I'm working my way across to this chain three corner space. So in my corner, I work a, a three trebles, one, two, and three, chain three, one, two, and three, and then three trebles, and then I'm going to continue to work this edge as well, so this side of the square as well. So all the way down to the corner, just as we would normally. Again, you may not chain in between your three trebles. Doesn't really matter if you do or you don't. It's all personal preference, really. So we're just going to start working our corner here. We're going to do our three trebles and we're going to chain three, but we're going to stop there. So let's take a look at how this is looking now with the other squares in place. So this is where we're up to. We've come across the top. This is our starting point. You can put a stitch marker there if you, if you wanted to. We've come across, we've come down, and now we're going to take our second square and start to um, crochet these two together. So this is where we're up to, and we're gonna continue this way. So for this square, we're going to do three sides of the square, and then for this square, again, we're going to do three sides of the square before we then come back on ourselves. So let's again put these to one side, and then we'll come back to these two squares. So I've just turned this to the side because I'm now going to work my three trebles into this corner space of the next square. So three trebles. One, two, and three. And then instead of doing a chain one into, uh, to move over to the next space, I'm actually going to look at the chain one space of the first square, and I'm going to slip stitch into that chain one space. Now again, even if you don't do a chain one, you would still just slip stitch into that space. We'll then find the next space and do our three trebles. So it's just like, working um, our ordinary fifth round, if that's the round that you're on, but instead of chaining one, you're slip stitching into the corresponding space on the previous square. So three trebles. And slip stitch. three trebles, and slip stitch. And then this brings us to the corner space of this square. So I'll do my three trebles. One, two, and three. Instead of chaining three, I'm going to chain one. I'm going to slip stitch into that corner space of the previous square, and then I'm going to chain one. If you only chain two, you could slip stitch and then chain one, or chain one and slip stitch, it's totally up to you. We're then going to continue to work that corner space by working our three trebles into that corner space of the current square. So what we've done now is we've created this section just here. 
So we've done our three trebles, chained one, slip stitched into the corner space of the previous square, chained one, and then three trebles. And it's joined those two corners together to create this flat edge across the top. So in terms of this drawing, we've just joined these two squares. So we've come across, down, up, and now we're going to go across the top again. So I'm going to chain one and then work across. Chain one, three trebles. So working my way to the corner. So remember this corner is going to be just a normal corner. So three trebles, chain three, one, two, and three, and then three trebles into that same corner space. And then chain one and work our way down this edge. So we'll work our way to the next corner the next corner is going to be where we introduce the next square. And again, I'll show you all of the squares together to see where we're up to. Just so you can feel a bit more confident as to what you're joining. So we're going to start with our three trebles into this corner and then do our chain three, one, two, three. However, those next three trebles will go into our next square. And then these are the squares from the row below. So this is where we're up to. We're going to work our way back up this edge. We're going to join the corner here again and then we're going to work our way across the top and then down this edge. So I'll show you once more how we're going to attach this. So let's go ahead and attach this corner. Just move these out of the way. We're going to turn our work a little bit to make it easier to work into this next square. So our three trebles, two and three. And then we're going to find that next space. Instead of chaining one, we're going to slip stitch. And then we'll go three trebles into the next space. So one, two, and three. Instead of chaining one, slip stitch into the next space. And again, three trebles. Two, three, slip stitch into the next space, three trebles, one, two, three, slip stitch into the next space. That then takes us to the corner again. So we'll work three trebles into the corner, one, two, and three. Instead of doing our chain three, we're going to chain three. The next one's going to be a slip stitch into the previous corner space, and then chain three, and then work our three trebles into that corner space as normal. One, two, and three. So now we've just joined those edges again like so, and then we're starting to get our flat top edge. So I'm just going to go ahead and continue to work this top edge, the corner is normal, and then down this edge, and I'll meet you back and show you what we're going to do next. So here's where we're up to. I've joined my top three squares. I've now come down the edge, 
and I've done three treble crochets into this corner space. What we've done previously is done three treble crochets and then join the next square. However, this is the final square of my row. So now we're actually going to work all the way across this edge here to then start the same um, joining pattern again. So let's again take these out the way. I'm going to turn my work because now we're working across this bottom edge. I'm going to chain three and then work my three trebles into this corner space as usual. And then I'm going to work my edge stitches. So I'm chaining one, three trebles. And we're going to work all the way to that corner space. Two and three, chain one, three trebles, one, two, and three chain one and now we're in this corner space. So we've already got three trebles in that corner space which we did previously. So we need three trebles in there, one, two and three. And what we're going to do here is we're going to chain one, slip stitch into this chain three space and chain one. And then we're going to do our three trebles into that next space. And what that has done is it's joined those corner spaces. So chain one, slip stitch into that chain three space, chain one, and then continue the corner. So let's go ahead and do that one more time. So I'm going to work my stitches across to the next corner. So here's my corner space. It's already got those three trebles from before. So we'll work three trebles, one, two, and three. We'll chain one, we'll slip stitch into this chain three space and that creates a faux corner here and then chain one and work three trebles into the next space like so. We're then going to work our way to this corner here just working three trebles of the corner. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and work my, my way across this space and then I'll come back and show you where we're up to. Okay, so I've worked my way across this edge and I've done three trebles, chain three in this corner. So if I just turn my work to view it in the way that we have been, this is the starting point and then these are my next squares. What we're going to do now is start to join the next row. So we're going to join this square next and then the following two. So where we're up to in the chart, we've come up and down all of these squares and we've come all the way across and now we're going to go up and down the squares again. So I've done my chain three here. Again, we're just going to ignore these super short ends. <laughs> and then we're going to do three trebles into this corner space. So this is the top corner space of the um, first square of the row. And then these are just the same as we've been doing before. So we're going to slip stitch into that next stitch. And then we're going to work three treble crochets into that next space. Slip stitch. 
three trebles. Slip stitch, three trebles, and then slip stitch. Now, because this time our corner has actually got something to connect to now, whereas before it didn't um, when we were doing the first corner, we're going to do three trebles. One, two, and three. Chain one. We're then going to take a look at our corner spaces. And then you want to find the um, corner that's diagonally across. So as we're looking at our squares, this is the one diagonally across. This is the corner space here for that square. We're going to slip stitch into that one. Chain one. And work our corner space. We'll finish our corner space. So now that is joined. Like so, if I just open this out. We have a corner, a corner, a corner, and then these larger sections just here are actually um, the join spaces. So let's just work our way down the ends of this edge. So continually, continuing to follow the joining path. nothing to join to so we're doing three trebles and chain one and then we're going to do our corner space we're going to join the next square for this one so we'll do three trebles chain three and then we're going to join this next square here. Sorry, got my squares the wrong way around. Uh, so this square here, and then this square here. In fact, I might switch these round just because I think it's going to be easier to show you this bit on a different color. So here we are, we're going to grab this next square. And as we have been doing, we're going to do three trebles into that corner space, one, two, and three. Slip stitch into the chain one space, the previous square. And we're going to work the same thing across. However, the corner space is just going to be ever so slightly different for this one. So three trebles, slip stitch. Three trebles, slip stitch. We're at the corner space now, we're going to do three trebles, one, two, and three, chain one, and we're going to join to the, the one diagonally, so it will be into this square, so we'll find that corner just here. This time though, what we're going to do is we're going to pull up a loop and take out our hook, go into that corner space of the one diagonally. So here is that corner space. And we're going to pull through that loop and then chain one. 
The reason I like to do that is just because at this point those stitches are a little bit bulkier so it just kind of makes a slightly need to finish. And then you're going to continue with your three treble crochets into the corner space. And then your slip stitch into the next space. So from this point, you're going to continue to work your way across, working your slip stitch into the square, which is diagonal from you. And then go down, back up, connect into the square diagonal, and then across, and then down into this corner space just here. So you can rewind the video for this corner section if you need to, but I'm going to go ahead and join these and I'll meet you back once I'm in this section just here. Okay, so let's take a look at where we're up to now. We've joined this top row. Uh, we came back along the straight path here, and then we've joined across, down and up, across, down and up, across, and then we've just worked down. So now I'm going to turn my work so that I can follow that straight path um, across the bottom of this row. So I had already done my three trebles and my train three in this corner, and now I'm just going to work across each of these spaces all the way to the end. So I will just remind you how we're going to work over that corner space because that corner space has a chain three there already and some stitches worked on both of the squares. So here's my corner space. It's a little bit more tricky to see here, apologies, because uh, this previous round is the same color, but this is that corner space and then this is the other corner space and these are the trebles which go into those corresponding spaces. So we're going to work three trebles into here. One, two, and three. And then we're going to do a chain one, find this chain three and slip stitch into there and then chain one, and then work three trebles into the next corner space, and continue to work across this straight path. So if I lay this down, I'm going to work my way all the way across to this final corner here, and then if I flip my work round to show you how we've been looking at it normally, I'll work across to here, and then we're going to finish by coming straight back to the beginning. So I'm gonna work my way to this corner, and then I'll show you what we do on this final way back up to the beginning. So here I am in this final bottom corner. We aren't joining this corner to anything. So this can be your standard corner, three trebles, chain three, and then three trebles, and then we're going to do the same thing as the straight pass, um, but this time we're returning to the beginning. So working our stitches as normal across these final unworked edges. We'll find that we come to another one of those corner spaces where there's a chain three and the start of the corner already worked. So we'll do our three trebles, chain one, slip stitch, chain one, and then three trebles to finish off 
that next corner space, chain one, three trebles, chain one, three trebles, chain one, three trebles, and then chain one, and then we have our very first corner space. So we're going to work three trebles, one, two, and three, chain three, and then join with a slip stitch to the top of your chain three. Fasten off. And there we have our finished panel. Now, if you were working something like this poncho, where you essentially, if I turn it round like this, you have two rows of three and a row of two. All you would need to do is join as we have and then join in these next two rows. And instead of joining another one, you just come down the bottom and then return your way up to the top. So it's exactly the same as what we've done here. You just wouldn't add your final square. Um, and this is really nice because you are left with only one end to sew in. And if you like the thought of making something where you only have one tail end to sew in like this, instead of being like this with loads of ends to sew in, then you might want to check out this video right here.